didn't warn anybody I was going to do this Facebook Live, so not going to be anybody there to begin with, but let's just make sure that it is up. I think I have to refresh the page. Yeah, there we are. We are live. And I'm going to stop looking at you, Facebook, because um, i got to look at other stuff. So if anybody tries to make a comment, I'm going to miss you. This is Ham Radio Now, episode 315. Do not call CQ on repeaters. I repeat, <laughs> that's not too redundant. Do not call CQ on repeaters. And that, by the way, is clickbait. For those of you who wonder what clickbait is, that's clickbait. And you won't believe what happens next. That's even more clickbait. Here's what this show is all about. Oh, by the way, I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy the programs, get something out of them, stop by our website, hamradionow.tv. Click Arvin's icon and you can make a contribution. Thank you very much. No David today. No uh, no um, co-host because uh, this was an impromptu last minute thing. And I'll explain why in just a second. I was looking at this um, at Reddit and um, and there was this article that popped up on Reddit. Uh, a, it's 20 days ago now. I think I responded to it a few days ago. Um, fella, uh, IDK dump account. IDK, I don't know dump account. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but that's you know, that's Reddit for you. He, uh, he posted this question. I found quite a few repeaters in my area, but most of them don't really have activity. One has a traffic report at 8.30. And another is some CW and some data, but none of them seem to be really active. Right up my alley. <laughs> so, uh, he got uh, he got a, a quick comment from Jinxside. Yeah, I read it. Jinxside. I'm just KN4AQ. Um, program all the repeaters into a radio, scan through them for a day or two, Alternately, find a net list in your area. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, North, <laughs> Northwest, <laughs> he made a joke. The Pacific Northwest, um, try the Mike and Key list, and he gives a, a website for that. But the odds of this guy being in the Pacific Northwest are pretty small. So um, I had a response for him. I'm going to read it to you and put it on the screen. I read it for the benefit of the audio listeners. Um, and it got upvoted quite a bit here, which is the way Reddit does things. If I mention the cute, oh, where's the cute upvote thing? I'm just seeing arrows. I used to have um, an antenna thing and a ground thing. Maybe I'm not seeing things right. All right, here's what I said. Uh, I agree, scanning them all will let you know when any are active. You build a mental map of repeaters and times. You can also create activity. Call CQ. Announce that you're a new ham and that you'd like to chat a bit. And here's the script. So I gave him a script so he didn't have to make it up himself. CQ, CQ, CQ. Anybody around? This is KN4AQ, Kilo November 4, Alpha, Quebec. My name is Gary. I'm a new ham in Cary. And I'm looking for a contact. KN4AQ. Standing by. When you get the inevitable reply that you're not supposed to call CQ on repeaters, well, well, one, you've made a contact. And two, tell them that you got the advice from KN4AQ, a ham who's been operating repeaters since the 60s, who wrote the FM and repeaters chapter in the ARRL operating manual okay that's my credibility and here oh that should be in the operating manual there you go that's my credibility and here's why you need to make a little noise to get attention some hams are scanning and they won't hear the first couple of seconds of your call 
and hams aren't hovering over their radios like police dispatchers just waiting for your call. They could be doing something else. They could be busy. And you actually have to motivate one of the hams who's listening to get involved in a conversation with you. That could be a whole nother show. Um, some of you, some of, uh, some of them will pick up on the new ham thing and they'll give you a shot because hams will do that. They might not come back to just anybody, but they'll hear somebody who's a new ham and some hams are pretty dedicated to the idea of a new ham should get a response. Um, I will add, uh, I guess I'll add that really great ham conversations are kind of rare. If you're lucky or good, you'll find some hams with common, uh, with interests in common or who just like talking about stuff. Good luck, Gary KN4AQ. So that, that was my response. And, um, here's the operating manual of which I referred. This is um, the ninth edition. Does it, does it have a year? No, I don't see a year on there. It's, it's been a few years since I did that. My uh, chapter may or may not still be in there under my name. I don't know. There's there's the article. Let me put it on the uh, on the micro cam. Um, VHF, UHF, FM repeaters, digital voice and data, and my name right there. Yes, in the official ARL operating manual. And I updated that for a couple of years. Um, I got paid pretty well for the first year and, um, and pretty well for the, for the second year. I want to re read one little spot in here because I've changed my mind about something from when I wrote this. Um, if the repeater isn't busy, key your transmitter and say something like, "Can for you listening. Use your own call, not mine, please. I'm clever. I'm going to put my face on camera. It's hard to hold the book up and read it. Um, KN4 EQ listening. Use your own call, not mine, please. You could, I suppose, call CQ the traditional method for generating a contact on HF. That never caught on on FM and repeaters, though as someone will probably tell you, and someone will probably tell you not to do it. You certainly don't need a 30-second long CQ designed to attract attention of hams tuning across uh, an HF band. On a repeater, your audience is already there waiting with squelched receivers, so if you want to start a trend or become notorious, you can say CQ. This is KM4AQ. So I have changed my, my mind about that, and now I um, always recommend calling CQ. I think I might have rewritten that for the next um, edition of the operating manual. I, 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 I think it's a good idea to call CQ. As, as I mentioned to, what was this guy's? Who was he? Uh, I, IDK dump account. <laughs> as I mentioned to him and to Jinxide, who responded to him, um, call CQ. Because when someone replies to you, when you get the inevitable reply that you're not supposed to call CQ on repeaters, well, you have made a contact, <laughs> got somebody to come back to you, and you can tell them that KN4AQ told you so. But the most, the most important thing is you made a contact. Now, somebody else responded to that that I'm going to get to in just a moment, but I want to add a little bit more to my credibility factor. Uh, we did the program with Glenn Sage, um, a program, two programs ago, three, um, 313. Um, and Glenn was uh, a columnist for this magazine, the Sarah Repeater Journal. And I don't know whether I mentioned that I edited the Repeater Journal for and wrote lots of articles for it um, back in the early 70s. So this is um, one of the issues that I edited August 2003 and I'm really proud of this because I took the ARRL license manual which at the time they were calling now you're talking and I went to look and see if I had a copy of that but I don't so I took that and I scanned it in and I you know stuck a microphone on it and then um, I changed the headline to now you're missing and the headline of the entire issue of the magazine was where is everybody so that's 2003 and 
Um, and things have been going on like that for a few years. And somewhere in here, I guess on the very back, I've got, um, I wrote an editorial every quarter. This is a quarterly magazine, which I cleverly called Squelch Tale. And um, I didn't invent that. T a t a tale being spelled T-A-L-E as in a story. You know, Squelch Tale, T-A-I-L, the thing that we hear on repeaters go when somebody finishes talking. So Squelch, T-A-L-E. I didn't invent that term. It was uh, invented before me by um, a uh, uh, a guy who was uh, editing a club magazine in Chicago for the Chicago FM Club. And it was an FM-oriented club, and they named the magazine The Squelch Tale. <coughs> um, I edited that for a while back in the... Uh, in the late seventies. So I appropriated the name for the, for my column. Oh, look at this picture. Now, when I, um, took this picture, uh, it was already, again, this issue was 2003. This picture is several years old at that point. And look, there's hair on the top of my head. Um, part of the reason why I wear the headphones is no, not much hair left on top of my head. Oh, that's not the reason I don't care. Wear the headphones so I can certify audio quality on the program. So I wrote this article um, and yeah, basically pointing out that the conventional wisdom is that repeaters are a lot quieter than they were. Or when? <laughs> well, it's an ambiguous time in the past. I'm going to peg it at the mid-90s, but I could go back to the late 70s as a reference marker. I suppose it's true. Don't know any source for hard data. All we've got is personal observations. And for most of us, that's local or at best it's regional. Um, but the reports are consistent enough from one area to another that there must be something up. So, so what's up? <coughs> and I go on to say a lot of things in that, uh, in that editorial. But it's basically referring to the same thing that uh, we started with here in the uh, Reddit column, which is uh, not much activity. Where did everybody go? One of the things everybody will tell you is that, that when activity was strong on repeaters, there weren't that many repeaters around. So if you wanted to get on the air, you got on the one of a small handful, depending on the metro size and the, the uh, enterprise, the uh, energy of the guys that built repeaters in your area. I mean, when I got on, when I first started in Chicago in the late 60s, early 70s, there were like three or four repeaters on the air in Chicago. Today, there's probably a hundred or more. Uh, okay, and, uh, the, and the other thing I pointed out in this article was that um, we had the, uh, the boom of operating uh, based on the FCC's instituting the no-code tech in 1991. And when they did that, everything took off. Club, clubs gained lots of members. Hamfests gained lots of attendees, repeaters gained lots of activity, and things got really busy for a while, but then it kind of fell off, and everybody wonders why. Um, did these, all these new hams lose interest? Where did they go? And we still don't really know. Cause there were a few other factors that happened uh, when activity fell off at Hamfests and in radio clubs. Um, there was the 2001, uh, uh, 2001, you know, 9-11 and the, the um, economic uh, crash that happened in the next couple of years, things, um, things kind of diminished for a while. And we've only been slowly clawing our way back up. So anyway, those are sort of my, my bona fides for commenting on this subject. I've been there. I've seen it over and over and I've written about it. All right. So somebody, and I was, I just thought this was cute because um, I wouldn't have uh, done a program about it until I got, <coughs> excuse me, I got, uh, got this. Well, there was a few other comments. Um, uh, and the fellow that originally put it up, the IDK dump account, I don't know dump account, said he would totally do it, but he's not licensed yet been studying and monitoring for a while though the test is in a few months so he will give it a try now t doffing which is tim ke0 lmx replied this way this works nearly every time oh yes somebody actually did it 
I was never going to call CQ on a repeater since I had heard someone get instructed not, not to do it. Never call CQ on a repeater. That, I, I started hearing that back in the 60s, maybe the early 70s. That's when I started hearing people say that. And once again, it was the everybody who is possibly listening is going to hear the very first phrase that you utter. Open the squelch. And there you are. That's not really true anymore. Um, lots of repeaters, hams will be scanning. Um, might not catch the first couple seconds waiting for, you know, scanning a quiet band. You know, eventually it'll come around to the repeater that you're on, but might miss a few seconds. Um, and not, like I say, not hovering over their radio like a police dispatcher. You know, just waiting for your call. They're listening to a podcast, perhaps this one. <laughs> doing something else, yelling at the kids. And uh, so you got to make a little noise. All right. I was never going to call CQ on a repeater since I heard someone get instructed not to do that. It happens everywhere. So what I did was load all the repeaters by distance and start scanning and listening. And I found several that were, that already had traffic. So that was easy. After I noted which ones had regular activity, I started working the ones that were apparently dormant. As soon as I key up and call CQ on the very first one, at least three people emerged immediately. It was hilarious. I was still laughing when I keyed up to reply. And I think what he was, what he skipped was that, um, he got that response. Don't call CQ on repeaters. It was hilarious. Um, As soon as I keyed up and called CQ on the very first one, at least three people emerged immediately. It was hilarious. I was still laughing when I keyed up to reply. Once I explained what I was doing and why I was doing it, they all agreed it was rather clever. I got some good information from these exchanges, who runs the repeaters, where one might join a club and contribute to maintaining the repeater, either with cash or volunteer time. This technique has worked very well for me. Tim KE0. LMX <coughs> still getting over the flu and uh, a lot of coughing still going on. My respiratory system is rebelling. Sorry. Uh, so thank you, Tim. Uh, that's the reason I'm doing this show because of Tim's reply. Um, thought that was awesome. I had something else in here in this uh, repeater journal that I wanted to, wanted to toss in. Oh yeah. Um, one other thing that I had done. Uh, that I wanted to tell you about. Um, drive, con- drive time listening can be deceiving. Five or six hams chatting for an hour commute can make a repeater seem busy, but it's a small number of the people who are really out there. Um, my commute to work, and this was, again, back in the early 2000s, my commute to work, I had a real job back then. <laughs> I, w- I worked for a company, showed up every day. My commute to work is a little later than most around uh, the most around here, about 20 minutes, sometime between eight and 9 a.m. There was never anybody on my club repeater. So I decided to see if there was anybody out there in the woodwork. I began calling the after eight late to work net. Once again, the repeater was busy from six until 7.30 till just about about eight o'clock. And, you know, people chattering, having a good time. And then everybody got to work and it went dead silent and it stayed dead silent until like four 30 in the afternoon. Literally nobody could trunk the repeater at all during the day. In my job, I was able to listen to it quite a bit. Um, and as a control operator, I, I listened to it as much as I could. <clears throat> um, so I just, I began calling the after eight late to work net. I ad libbed a net preamble that listed all the types of hams who might be out there driving around that time of day. Hams who are late to work, not late to work, students on a break, salesmen who just drive around all day and don't get any work done, Uh, people on the night shift and just getting out of work, hams on vacation, hams who are retired. I made that up, and I did it day after day after day, and eventually I memorized it kind of the way I memorize. Every Radio Now is brought to you by you. See Arvin there in the back. Um. Out of the woodwork they came, 5, 10, 15, 20 or more. 
a retired ham, Bill Lyon, and for CAR, saw that this was a handful for me to handle while I was mobile. I couldn't take any notes or you know write down anybody, so I, it was kind of hard to make sure everybody got a chance to go talk. Um, so he offered to be net control. He ran the net for an hour each morning, and the casual rag juice kept going long after I arrived at work. Uh, he kept it up for several years before he got tired of the routine. Nobody else wanted to keep it running, so it ended, and the repeater went back to being quiet after the 7 a.m. crowd got to work. And once in a while, I would revive it, and and um, you just out of no place at you know 8:06 in the morning, uh, calling the after eight late to work net. This is KN4AQ looking for hams who are late to work or not late to work or driving around, whatever. People would come on. They'd still be out there. They'd still be waiting, but they weren't. They weren't doing any talking. Uh, so if you find a repeater, find that your local repeaters don't have very much activity. It is up to you and you can make some activity happen as much as you want to. Uh, and I guess that will be the end of this editorial and the end of this show. Yes, I can make short shows. I think this is a short show. I don't remember when I started doing it, and it's longer than I thought it was going to be, but I think it, I think we're still under 20 minutes. So that's it for this episode of Ham Radio Now. I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. If you enjoy the program, get something out of it. This was fun, wasn't it? Um, stop by Arvin uh, back there. Stop by and see Arvin on hamradionow.tv, our website. You can contribute by joining the Patreon, which is a monthly contribution. There's about 53 hams that are doing that right now. Um, you can make an individual one-time contribution, um, either using PayPal or a credit card, or you can send me a check, or you can send me an envelope that's got a $5 bill in it. If you're going to do something like that, that's pretty easy. I mean, it's not too likely to get stolen. Wrap enough paper around it so no one can see through the envelope. All right. Go make some noise on your local repeater. Call CQ. Tell them I sent you. 73. Over. And out. Calling CQ, 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 CQ. Okay, let's see if anybody's still on Facebook. Or anybody showed up on Facebook. I think I see a three there. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm getting comments. Aloha from WH6AV. Hey, Jesse. David Goldenberg is watching. David, I didn't, you know, I thought you'd be like busy. I thought you'd be like working. Okay, let me boot up my Skype. He may actually be working. Do I want to leave a video message? No, thanks. Well, maybe he'll see this and call me back. But then I won't hear it because it doesn't ring here for some reason. I don't know. Well, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of comments here. Uh, oh, David says, no can talk. Yeah, he's got a real job. Um, N2ADV is, uh, is watching on the Skype, on the Skype, on the uh, Facebook. So we, the people out there are lurking. You know, just like on your local repeater where nobody's making any noise because no one's making any noise. You show up and there, there people are. So, all right. Thanks, you guys. I, I have an appointment. I have to go meet. So... For Facebook, over and out.